and welcome to SL Productions in a brand new video. In this video, I will be ranking all 11 series of Doctor Who from worst to best. So yes, in the modern era of Doctor Who, there has been 11 series. So for 1,000 subscribers, I have decided to rank them from worst to best. So yes, I last did a series ranking after series 9 in 2016. And yes, it has changed a lot since then. Yes, there has been two additional series. But some series have gone from the top of the list to the bottom of the list and vice versa. So yes, my opinion has changed over three years. So yes, starting this list at number 11, we do have series 11 of Doctor Who. Now series 11, it does have some good episodes. The Woman Who Fell to Earth is great. Rose is great. Kaplam is great, in my opinion, and Resolution is great, but really there are lots of weak episodes in this series, such as the Witchfinders, it takes you away, they're not very good in my opinion, but also the other episodes are below average in my opinion, such as Demons of the Punjab, the Ghost Monument, the Finale, they're just not good. They're not bad, they're just not good, and they're not really that exciting. It's not cringeworthy to watch, it's just not exciting to watch some of those episodes in Series 11. And the arc is extremely weak in the series with Tim Shaw only mentioned in a couple of episodes. It didn't, it did intrigue me, but there just wasn't enough of it. There wasn't enough of a series arc in the series, hence why it comes in at number 11. Now coming in at number 10, we do have Series 7 of Doctor Who, Matt Smith's final series as the Doctor. So yes, in my opinion, this series has more weak or bad episodes than it does good episodes. There are some good episodes in this series. Asylum of the Daleks is great in my opinion, A Town Called Mercy is great, The Angels Take Manhattan is great, The Bells of St. John, and The Name of the Doctor. However, the other episodes are either weak or just below average. You know, episodes like Hyde, they're okay, they're just not great. And other episodes are bad, such as The Rings of Akatan and Nightmare in Silver. I don't really enjoy those stories. I love Matt Smith's speech, however, in The Rings of Akatan. That is a good moment in a bad episode, in my opinion. Also, Series 7 has an extremely weak arc. I did like the Impossible Girl series arc, but like Series 11, there wasn't enough of the arc. It did intrigue me, there just wasn't enough references to it, and yeah, it just didn't really flow that well. So yes, moving on to number 9, we do have Series 9 of Doctor Who, Peter Capaldi's second series as the Doctor. So yes, in my 2016 ranking, this was at number 2 on my list, and now it is at number 9, as my opinion has changed when I've rewatched episodes and got older. So yes, why do I not like Series 9 of Doctor Who? There are some episodes I like, I like the Ghost 2 part, I like the Zygon 2 part, I like Face the Raven and Heaven Sent. However, the other episodes aren't that great. There are some good episodes, but there's a lot of bad episodes. Sleep No More, that's not great. He Hell Bent, that's not great in my opinion. The other episodes, like the two parter with the Daleks, that's average in my opinion. The Woman Who Lived and the Girl Who Died, they're average in my opinion. And the arc in this series is really weak with the hybrid. I just didn't really get engaged with that story arc. There still was more mention of the hybrid series arc than there was of Tim Shaw and the Impossible Girl. However, it just didn't intrigue me as much as it didn't really interest me. Hence why Series 9 comes in at number 9. So yes, moving on to number 8. So coming in at number 8, we do have Series 8 of Doctor Who, Peter Capaldi's first series as the Doctor. So yes, why does Series 8 come in at number 8? So firstly, I do think Series 11 has an average arc. The arc isn't great, but the arc isn't bad. I did quite like the arc, but but in other terms, I didn't really like the arc. I just didn't like the conclusion to it, and I thought it was a bit anticlimactic. So yes, Series 8 does have some good episodes, but it also has some below average and weak episodes in the series. For example, In the Forest of the Night isn't great at all. I used to like that episode when it first came out. I really liked it. In fact, I remember thinking to myself when that episode aired, I think this is the best ever episode of Doctor Who. Yes, I admit it, I thought In the Forest of the Night was the best episode of Doctor Who for about an hour before I decided, no, it's not that great actually. So yeah, Series 8 isn't the best of series, it has a lot of weak episodes in it. The arc, yes, that's good, 
average. And it does have some good episodes. I do like a lot of episodes in the series. I like Robot of Sherwood, which is a pretty underrated one. I like Listen as well. And yeah, I do think it has quite some, a good mix of episodes, Series 8. Hence why it comes in at number 8. Now coming in at number 7, we do have Series 3 of Doctor Who. David Tennant's second series as the Doctor. So this episode has a lot of good episodes in my opinion. It does have some episodes which I don't think are very good. Such as 42. Don't like 42. Does anyone like 42? The Shakespeare Code. Didn't really like that episode that much and the Lazarus experiment. But other than that, I think the other episodes are really good in my opinion. I really like Blink. A classic. I like the three parter at the end. I think that's great. But the only thing which lets this series down, in my opinion, is the arc. I just don't think the arc is that strong in the series. It's good, but it's just not really strong. Like the Kraken Time arc and the Torchwood arc. I just didn't really get engaged with this arc that much, hence why it comes in at number 7. Now coming in at number 6, we do have Series 10 of Doctor Who. Now I love the arc in Series 10 of Doctor Who, Peter Capaldi's third and final series as the Doctor. However, Series 10 of Doctor Who still has a few weak episodes in my opinion. The good episodes are, for example, the two parts at the end, I love the Eaters of Light, I love The Lie of the Land, I love Empress of Mars, I love Thin Ice, but I don't like Smile, Knock Knock, Oxygen, Extremist, The Puma at the End of the World, I think those episodes are weak in my opinion. Love the pilot, think it's a great start, and I love the art for this series, I was really engaged with the art for this series, hence why it comes in at number 6. Now moving on to number 5. Now coming in at number 5, we do have Series 6 of Doctor Who, an underrated series in my opinion. I think this episode has some great episodes. Yes, Let's Kill Hitler is not a great episode. There's also some episodes which aren't that great, such as The Curse of the Black Spot, and in my opinion, The Girl Who Waited isn't that good. But other than that, the episodes in the series are great in my opinion. I really enjoy it, and I really do love the arc. The finale, I do like. I do like The Wedding of River Song. I do think it is one of the most underrated finales in Doctor Who's history. I do actually really enjoy that episode. You know, it is a bit silly, but I really enjoy The Wedding of River Song. So yes, that's why Series 6 comes in at number 5. Now moving on to number 4, we do have Series 1 of Doctor Who. The first series of the revival of Doctor Who has a great arc in my opinion. I love the arc with Bad Wolf. I think that is really great. And yes, the episodes in my opinion are great as well. There are a few exceptions which aren't great, such as the Slovene two-parter, the long game. But really, the other episodes are great in my opinion. I really do like series one of Doctor Who and I think it is a great start to New Who. Now moving on to number three, we do have series two of Doctor Who, another great arc. I love the Torchwood arc in this series. I think that is a really strong arc. Has some great episodes in my opinion. There's only four episodes in the series, which I think aren't that good. New Earth, that's one of them. Tooth and Claw, and then of course, Love and Monsters and Fear Her. I did actually like Fear Her when I first watched it, but I was like 11 at the time. So yeah, I just, didn't really enjoy that. Moving on to number two, we do have series four of Doctor Who. Now series four of Doctor Who, great series. I do really love series four of Doctor Who. Does have a few weak episodes. Planet of the Ud, in my opinion, is pretty weak. And the Sontaran two part. But other than that, I think the other episodes are great in the series and I really enjoy it. The finale is the best finale in Doctor Who's history, in my opinion. I love the Stolen Earth and Journeys and it feels like Doctor Who Avengers Assemble. It was before Avengers got big. This is what started it all. This is what probably inf inspired Marvel Avengers and then Marvel Avengers outgrew Doctor Who. So yes, moving on to number one. My favourite series of Doctor Who is Series 5. Yes, Series 5 comes in at number one. The first series of Doctor Who I watched live. So yes, it has a fantastic arc in my opinion with the cracks in time. I really did love that arc. And yeah, there's only two bad episodes in this series in my opinion, which are the Beast Below and Victory of the Daleks. Other than that, all the other episodes are great in my opinion. I really do love this series. So yes, that is the end of my ranking. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers and until the next time, goodbye!